Hi there. Welcome to another episode of Nature Aquarium's USA how-to videos. Remember, like, share, and subscribe to our channel so you can always stay up to date with our latest videos. In today's video, we're going to discuss how we fertilize our planted aquarium tanks. And we have quite an easy way to do this. And I want to show you here on our display tank. This is before the stores open. That's why you see everything else is uh, turned off behind us. So we like to use um, a nitrate test kit. Uh, we use a fertilizer that's uh, nitrate, phosphate, and potassium based, normally known as NPK. And uh, one of the easiest ways to measure it is by doing a nitrate test. And you can do it either with a test kit, like an API test kit or a fluval, or you can get these really cool aquarium co-op test strips, which we have at our store in our online channel, and it measures for nitrate. So to do these, grab your test kit, and you're gonna briefly dip the test into the water, and you have to give it 60 seconds. It is important that you keep the test strip on a horizontal level for 60 seconds. And that's what's gonna based on whether we should be fertilizing or not. Uh, there's a couple of different ways how to do fertilization. One of them uh, called the lean method, which means that you're only dosing as little as possible as what you need for the tanks. And as soon as they take it, they use it and the water stays on the low nutrient level. And then there's the EI method, which is called also known as estimative index, uh, perfected and invented by Dr. Tom Barr. Uh, the estimative index says, hey, you know, plants are going to need certain percentage of nitrates, phosphates, potassium, iron, and trace minerals, let's make sure that none of these elements are in short supply. Because when they do, plants do cut back on their growth, and then algae, being a single-celled organism, takes over. Uh, we like to run more on the estimative index. We are running CO2 in this tank, and in our plant holding uh, tanks over there. And I'd rather it have a little bit more on the nutrients, then to cut back because then that causes the plants to start and stop. Uh, some of the faster growing plants, like stem plants, have no issue starting or stopping. But the slower growth plants like Lucifilias, Anuvias, um, Vals, and, uh, and Java ferns, their start stop uh, time can be a lot longer. So in the meantime, all those uh, nutrients kind of build up in the system and don't, uh, you know, cause an excess of nutrients in which algae will take over. So it's always important to make sure that you don't cause your plants to start and stop. You kind of want to feed them constantly. Um, so by now, it's been about 60 seconds, right? But I've been talking. And so what we do is we grab our test kit and we compare it against the colors. So let me line this up. We dosed, everybody can see that. So the important part that we're uh, measuring for is uh, nitrate, and we're running about 10 parts per million. Uh, we dosed yesterday, wanted to make sure we're still at that level. Uh, we want to really keep nitrates around 20 to 30 parts per million in a CO2 tank, and about 15 uh, parts per million, 10 to 20 on, on a non-CO2 tank. In this case, we're a little bit low. Uh, I'll probably end up dosing heavy again tomorrow uh, to make sure that we don't drop our fertilization levels. Stay tuned for another video in which I'm going to discuss more the importance of the different nutrients and how they impact plant growth. Till then, thank you for subscribing. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.